That's what I have to do. You there's just script? have to. There's no, there's, there's no script. Yeah, and then we just answer them. <laughs> That's what a QA is. Half yes. the questions are Is that Hudson Yang? <laughs> <laughs> That's literally all the questions. <laughs> are you a Nathan Dater? <laughs> Nathan is so cute. <laughs> and what's Nathan's at? Is Nathan single? <laughs> What's up guys and welcome to a Q&A with my blocking group. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. You guys introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Hudson. Hi, I'm Amanda. <laughs> I'm Nathan. I'm Helen. I'm Prince. And I'm Anne. Alright, so I asked you guys questions on Instagram, um, like questions for my blocking group and we're just gonna answer them for you guys today. All right guys, so first question, what is a blocking group? Who wants to take it? So Hudson when, does. I, I, I totally do. Um, <laughs> so a blocking group is like a group of people, we're all blocked together, no, it's, so basically- um, When a group of people like each like, other very, very much. Like, very much, <laughs> and so the mommy and the daddy, which is, no. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so at Harvard we have our upperclassmen dorms and underclassmen dorms, and when you go from like freshman to sophomore, you have to like move into an upperclassmen dorm, and you gotta choose, you know, two, one to eight people that you want to be with. Um, so we chose six, uh, unfortunately. This is our blocking group, a bunch of lovely individuals, and Amanda came up with a wonderful name for our group. And which is six in the stacks, and we won't go into explaining it, but if you really want to figure out more about it, Google the big four. I will also add, just because we're blocking groups doesn't mean we're actually going to be in the same room. Yeah. Um, you just it just it make sure that you're in the same um, house. Yes. And so. we are all in Adam's house. Adam's house, best house. Next question. Are you and Nathan dating? Would you date Nathan? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes, actually. You can ask Helen's right. aunt. Yes, no. as a no. <laughs> so, so, um, so unfortunately, so Nathan is Sorry taken. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> yeah, Nathan is taken. taken um, by, by Hudson. By Hudson. Hudson. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Helen okay. can, unless they break up. No, I fuck. Never mind. <laughs> it was behind the minute anyway, they wouldn't see. I know, but it's not my feelings. <laughs> oh my god. What are some preconceptions that you had about Harvard? Oh. True and untrue, I guess. I thought the school was going to be filled with so many losers and nerds. Like, I was, I was like, ah, oh, what do I even want? Like, I didn't get, actually, I didn't get into any other colleges, so I was like, fuck, I have to go here. And I have to, like, spend my time with a bunch of nerds who don't know how to like, have fun. This is a false. You know, there are a lot of nerds here, granted, yeah. but the nerds, nerds know how to have fun. They know how to have fun. It's exactly. fun. Also, nerds isn't a bad thing. I, I make that clear. I love nerds, but like, I was like, I can't do college to have fun. So, and also learn. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Sorry, Side mom. note. Side note. <laughs> I thought Harvard was just gonna be a whole bunch of rich white people. Mm, that's true though. That had like three, four generations of heritage at Harvard. But there's there's poor people too, like, <laughs> like myself and, and and first gen poor people. Yes. Like Hell yes. Myself, yes. Like myself, so that's fun. Shout out to all the poor first gen people. Fire <laughs> life, F Y R E. I guess for me, I just thought that I'd gone to a boarding school for high school, and I thought that the transition would have been easier than it was. Mm. Um, but I think the most important thing about Harvard is to give it, you know, a hot second. Give it a chance for it to get good. You need to get through the hard parts, and eventually there there are some amazing things on the other side of what's challenging in the beginning. Yeah, I definitely thought it was like really stuck up because at first like I didn't like Harvard at all, and then I got it. And I was like, oh wait, maybe I'll go here. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, there are like a lot of stuck up people here. Yes, there's like elitism here, but yeah. there are amazing people like you guys here. So, not all that is entirely true. Yeah. No, it's a weird. No, no. You sold it really yeah. well. <laughs> I think, really I think that's something that you. you can kind of find at every school, though. Oh, yeah. There's the good and the bad. And yeah. 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 I will say Harvard has a really great ecosystem, like fun cultures and activities that you can do. Yeah. The dorms are amazing. There's great dorm culture and family. At Adam's house, we have like a bunch of like fun games and rituals, and like the houses are gorgeous. Harvard's a great place to be, you know, if you have a chance. Yeah. Do people from different racial and socioeconomic groups mix socially at Harvard? Uh, this, this, is blocking, so, um, this is a loaded yeah. question, blocking though. Group. This is a loaded question, though, because yeah. actually, I have found that not all the time. Yeah, no, um, definitely not. There's a lot of people complaining about this because, like, there's white men who are saying, like, oh, I have to be friends with someone else because I'm white, which is also feels kind of yeah. rough. If you, there's a, we have an uh, Instagram called 
uh, Crimson Confessions, and on there you'll find a lot of complaints about this. But I think, for the most part, Harvard is very inclusive, especially in friend groups. Our group is very diverse. Yes, yes. Um, a lot of other groups are as well, but there are definitely the, the, the few who tend to... I think, like, ours. something that's interesting is, for the most part, people tend to, like, mingle and mix together, but yeah. there are certain demographics that, I guess, kind of lean towards each other. I think it was some Crimson article about last year and the demographic makeup of finals clubs, which mm -hmm. are kind of like the elite social clubs of Harvard. Our equivalent of yeah, yeah. And something I think was unique about the hasty pudding class of that year was out of every single first year student that was initiated into the club, only one of them out of like 80 went to a public school. Wow. And so it kind of goes to show that for the most part, I do think everyone is pretty inclusive and everyone mingles, but there is a lot of lingering, you know, discrimination kind of going on behind the scenes. Um, That's which is something I think is getting better year by year. Yeah. And I think that as a whole, though, there's a ton of support and community here, and it's not really something you have to worry about too much. Yeah. I don't think that Harvard's doing a great job of pushing inclusivity as well. And, and this is an issue that happens at most colleges. I mean, I wouldn't have personal experience, but I have friends and family and colleagues who have the same issue. It's very, you know, clicky and whatnot. So I think Harvard's doing a great job of trying to force people into uncomfortable but also natural situations. Yeah. All right, next question. What are you all majoring in? I'm probably doing some type of track on neuroscience, maybe like computational neuroscience. I'm allergic to STEM, so oh. <laughs> I won't be majoring in anything related to the STEM category. Mm -hmm. I'm the same way. Um, probably somewhere in the humanities, a history, African American studies, somewhere around there. I am extremely undecided and will probably never decide. No. <laughs> Against my better judgment, I'm doing mechanical engineering. I'm doing economics, probably. I am planning on coming and doing a double major in psych and film, so that'll be fun. Nice. nice. How has your mental health been lately, and how important is setting time aside for yourself? <laughs> loaded. Yeah, very loaded. That's loaded. I definitely do think a big part of Harvard, and I guess colleges in general, is that it's not necessarily that the course content or anything um, is a lot harder, but the harder part is it just requires an immense amount of self-discipline and a lot of, like, willpower you didn't realize you needed um especially you know moving somewhere else which most students here aren't local um you don't have that same support system and so i think wherever it is you go to college it's kind of crucial you build that support system because otherwise it, it can really be a difficult place to be yeah, so sure. well, that's a, yeah. well said um one yeah. thing i'll say is that you know the the baseline course schedule isn't particularly you know, too straining, uh, but everyone here is by nature an overachiever, and when you put a bunch of overachievers in, <laughs> all right, Hudson, all right, all right fresh off the boat. <laughs> so <laughs> you put a bunch of overachievers in the same place, uh, they all start to feel normal again, and they do everything in their power to just overload themselves with extracurriculars, and they, they're just intrinsically motivated people, so they push themselves. Um, so Harvard will put your emotional health through the ringer, but you will come out the other end of a stronger person, and as Anne said, there are um, places where people can get support. Yeah. Harvard definitely makes you feel like you're like, you know, the big fish in a small pond type thing. Yeah. It's tough. And um, from a student athlete perspective, I definitely think sometimes managing like academics with doing something intensive like a sport or any other demanding extracurricular, it can be challenging to find time for yourself when you're trying to balance so many other things. But I think it's something that as you just kind of keep pushing, keep on plugging along throughout, you know, each semester. You figure it out more and more. And I think as you discover balance and discover more friends, it gets a lot better and a lot easier. Yeah. Hook up culture at Harvard. Oops. Ha 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 ha. Please erase my name. <laughs> so, I guess they're asking, like, is there a hook up culture at Harvard? And the answer is, um, depends on who you are. It's nothing that's, like, forced on you. There's something, yeah. you know, along the lines of hookup culture that does exist. Um, and I think some of it's healthy. I think, just for the most part, coming from a girl, boys, freshman boys can be immature and <laughs> not ready for anything. Yep. So, yeah. 
That's tough. That's tough. Sorry, friends. Sorry, <laughs> Hudson. Sorry, Nathan. I can't say nothing. I think a big thing as well is just there's kind of this culture at Harvard where it seems like everybody is busy and on the go, and so a lot of people think like they don't have time for relationships right now, and yeah. that can kind of lead to a form of hookup culture. Um, but I think a lot of it is you kind of you can get what you want out of it. Um, as long as you just, you know, stick to your values and go for what you want, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of people are not ready for commitment, so yes, there is a pretty big hookup culture, I would say, but... Yeah, like, if you take a yeah. bunch of emotionally immature teenagers, really intelligent people, but emotionally immature teenagers, yeah. and put them in probably one of the most straining possible uh, environments in which to form a relationship, a lot of people are going to shy away from that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How often do you guys party? <laughs> you know what's so funny? Harvard was like named one in like the top ten. Yeah, we're the top ten party school. BS, That's bro. Fake news. Okay, the, the truth is, fake you news. can party like every night if you like if know you want people. To. Yeah. But if you're like just like if you're not part of that scene all the time every day, the honest truth is you will have zero parties at all. Like you'll drink in your own room by yourself. That is your extent. <laughs> I'm fine. I, I'm part of, I mean, okay, I'm you, you trapping you in a pickle here. But I'm just saying, Harvard has parties if you want to party. Harvard yeah. has, you know, studies if you want to study. Harvard has everything you want to do. So yeah. if you want to be the person who just goes out every night, like people I know, some people, like, I'm not looking at anybody here, <laughs> um, you can. But if you want to never go out or go out once on the, on the weekends or whatever, you have that choice. So I think, you know, parties are there, but yeah. you don't always get to go. I, I would say like most of my friends like they make an effort to go out like at least once a week. Yeah. Yeah, I think normally that's like the average probably. Mm. I would yeah. say so too. Yeah. My friend group breaks that average by like five days. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what advice do you have for incoming freshmen? I guess like to like college or like Harvard or something like that. Yeah. Honestly, I just think the biggest advice I could give to anybody, no matter on where they are, is just take it easy on yourself. I think that like there's so much pressure to achieve certain things by a certain age or do all this stuff, but I mean when you look back at things at the end of the day, you're not going to think about that one A you got. You're going to be thinking about like the times you had or, you know, maybe that one time you slept in was really good or that one time you decided to, you know, take some time off and go on a trip with your friends. Like that's what kind of matters at the end of the day. So. I'll play devil's advocate to that. In college, <laughs> it's about self-discovery. Push yourself to your limits healthily, <laughs> healthily, but figure out where your limits are in certain things. Again, be safe. <laughs> okay. I'll say finding good in-between is great. I also have another two points of advice. One for the freshman is that prepare yourself for the first month of school. You're going to be meeting a lot of people at really fast-paced, and a lot of the times people aren't going to be entirely true to who they are. They are also doing the same thing of just trying to meet as many people as possible. You may try to may find yourself making these connections that might fall apart later on, and you have to understand that it's not you. You know, I can't understand that a couple of months on the line. It's like, it's not your fault. Um, it's just the way that school is working the first couple of weeks. Everyone's trying to find their people, and they did, and then if you weren't part of those people, you're left out. I was prepared yourself for that. And also for, not incoming freshmen, but for kids in high school, start, like freshman high school, um, one thing I found important is that your grades, especially coming to Harvard, they're important, but not as important as you might think. Um, I think what's more important is making yourself different and you're interested. Find your unicorn spike. If that means starting a business or starting a, go, uh, a non, um, non profit. Non -profit <laughs> See, I'm a dumbass. Or like just doing something fun and like creative or helping the world. That is more important to Harvard and other schools than just getting straight A's. Because I know people who got the best grades ever but got rejected because they did nothing else except for study all the time. Yeah. So yeah. it's another piece of Exactly. You can have a 4.0, 1600 and not get into Harvard. They want people, not necessarily who have the best grades, but who they think might someday change the world. Yeah. So and if you can convince community. the admissions of that, then you have a really good chance. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah I mean, yeah. small ask, but... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think one thing, too, um, is just overall, like, finding a balance is a challenge, but I think some days it's going to be hard. Um, but I think if you look at that more as, like, a challenge and something that's, like, like, yes, this is hard, like, it's going to make me better. I think that's, like, the best way to approach, like, going into college. And I think part of that balance is, like, you don't want to stretch yourself out too thin, but you also don't want to limit yourself to one friend group or, like, holding yourself in your room just to do, like, your studies. Uh, okay. Also, wait, one more thing, actually. <laughs> I think this one's really important because we've all gone through this before. All right. Imposter syndrome. Yes. I mean, we've all dealt with it. We all know how it feels to feel like you don't belong here. What are you talking about? Oh, um, no. <laughs> 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 so you're still going through it. 
it's a problem. You're gonna face it. Prepare yourself for it now. I mean, if you guys have any advice yourselves about what you guys did to kind of get over it, make yourself feel better. Or if you're still going through it now, you can say that. I feel like everyone is still kind of going through it, like in a way. Like it's gotten better, I guess, like for a lot of people. But yeah. I think when you meet everyone like service level, they like obviously they put their best foot forward. Yeah. So everyone's gonna seem super impressive. But like yeah. a couple weeks in, when you have like a few like good friends, like ninety percent of people like the connections will fall off. But like the ten percent will be your group. And once you get to know people on a deeper level. You'll see that everyone's imperfect. Like for me, I felt like, like I mean, I obviously got, I worked very hard to get good grades in school and, you know, to do things to make myself a good applicant, but a big part of the reason why I'm here is because I play a sport and sometimes I'm like, I'm not as smart as everyone else here and I can't shape up and I'm trying to work hard or whatever and I feel like I'm still falling through and Nathan actually told me, he was like, it's your hard work and all those values that you have that made you the athlete that you are that got you here. Yeah. And I think that is something really important to not just look at like what's on your application that makes you you, but it's like what's fueling the things that you do, like your values and things like that. And in terms of like athletics, I honestly think the student athletes at Harvard probably work harder than most of the students here because and they have to be so disciplined. They have to like, yeah. you know, the like manage their time. Football players get up at five a.m. Yeah. Every morning. I get up Fruit around six. Yeah. My body's broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. I like it. I like it. That's another piece of advice. Sleep. Yeah, sleep, 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 sleep please, but don't be like yeah. me and sleep for 24 hours straight. Right. <laughs> Unless you need it, you know. Unless you really have to. Just do what you need to to not develop a caffeine addiction. A lot of advice for Harvard students. It's, 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 a, t it's a tough place to live. Yeah. Is Hudson single? <laughs> is Nathan Hudson single? Actually, the answer is no for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Hudson Yang I love him. Oh. Hey, Hudson, Carrie underscore You're not gonna say I love you loves back? you. I love you too, person that I've never met before. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do, I love all my fans. <laughs> Shut up. Follow me on Hudson Yang on Instagram. That's all. <laughs> yep. And if you have a cool accent, send him a voice memo. Yeah, that is that's my his bio. bio. Do that. Yeah. I love Australian accents. So last question. Do you regret choosing Harvard? Absolutely not. Every day. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. We're serious. In all seriousness, speaking for myself, um, no. I would say no. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not. I think yeah. there are so many amazing opportunities, like classes, professors, people here, and you'll find your niche when you find it. Um, but it really just is an incredible place. And I think sometimes the daily grind, it's hard to remain grateful, mm -hmm. you know, about, you know, like, like, Wow, I'm like I'm here. You yeah, know? exactly. It's like sometimes you have those moments and it's just the best feeling. Like I don't I absolutely don't regret going to Harvard, but I also think that wherever I would have gone to school it would have been an equally valuable experience mm -hmm. kind of. Um, because it really is kind of what you make out of it. And so no, I don't regret it, but I also don't think I would have regretted it if I had gone somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Um, but I am very grateful for like the amount of opportunities that I get here that I know I wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. I think the question is for 10 years from now, um, and not today. Mm -hmm. I feel like I easily can be like, oh, what if, but right now it's like, it's unproductive for me to be like, you know, a decision that's already been made is a decision that you shouldn't, you know, mm -hmm. kill yourself over. Yeah. Like, you made a decision, and there's gonna be positives and gonna be negatives, and like that's how life is. You're just gonna have experiences that are uh, just across the board experiences, and there's no need to dwell on the decisions you made. Mm -hmm. uh, to be fair, um, I'll say I don't know whether I'll ever regret going to Harvard, but I definitely would have regretted not going, having gotten mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm an engineering yeah. major, there are other schools I got into which like, technically have better engineering programs, but I can't imagine, like, just passing up on such an amazing opportunity and, like, mm -hmm. at least, you know, seeing where it takes me. Yeah. I think I would've, if I had to make the choice again, I probably wouldn't have chosen Harvard. 
Um, That's it. I'm not done yet. Um, but the fact that I came here and met so many incredible people with me, and down the line, I could never choose a different option. Mm -hmm. um, I met people here that I'm more than certain I will be friends with for the rest of, the rest of my life. It will be my wedding, be my, my funeral when I die, a couple years from now. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, no, but in all seriousness, I've met amazing people here, and you will too if you come, or wherever you go, you'll meet cool people. So I don't regret it, but I might have made a different decision. I think that concludes our video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, everyone, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do whatever, and follow do us. Whatever. <laughs> and send Hudson a voice memo. Yeah, send and Hudson send a voice, voice message. Memo with your best Australian accent. Yes, please, please, Hudson Yang. Good night, mate. Oh, so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah I'm gonna take a and, bow. Uh,